The Wipeout Course, a hallowed tradition, a story shrine to competition, athleticism, and achievement, one of the most revered fields of combat in the history of sport. And now, it's time to crank it up Canadian style. Not what we were going for there. 20 ordinary Canadian men and women from Glace Bay to the mouth of Mackenzie are about to go head to head on the most ridiculous obstacle course ever assembled. Those crazy enough to accept the challenge must be prepared for the spills. The thrills. And the fantastic fumbles. The four contestants left standing will face off in the wipeout zone. Each week from 20 contestants, only one will emerge victorious. Who will win? Who will lose? And who will? Rhetorical question alert. Wipeout! Welcome to Wipeout Canada. I'm Jonathan Torrens, and standing to my right, your left, is Annis Esmer. He means me! Today on our Wipeout course, we've assembled 20 nice, polite, maple syrup swilling Canadians, and we're gonna pit them against each other in a battle to the death. Well, not, not to the death. I'm pretty sure it's to the death. No, Ennis, it is in fact a battle to $50,000. Oh, well, that's way better than death. But before they can collect up that cash and spend it all in one place, they're going to have to qualify in our appropriately named qualifier. That does seem appropriate. Here, our contestants will face the following near impossible obstacles. They'll have to climb the slippery stairs, avoid getting socked by the sucker punch, bounce across the big balls, and navigate the block swing. The contestants with the 12 fastest times will advance to the sweeper round and be one step closer to the $50,000. Joining us at course level, as always, is Jessica Phillips. Jessica. Hey, guys, I'm standing here with Rex Carter. Jessica Phillips, this wipeout moment is for you. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, sexy dance. I like it. Oh, Jessica, just for you, babe. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, that's the kind of thing you can never unsee. Let's just start. Oh, Jessica. Can somebody tell him to stop? We can by making him start. You have to admit one thing, though. He is persistent. Most stalkers are. The naughty Albertan approaches the first obstacle, the slippery stairs. He'll have to get to the top without using his hands. And that's just about one of the poorest efforts you'll ever see. If he could only climb stairs like he could climb trees outside Jessica's hotel room, he'd be in business. Now on to the next obstacle. Keeping in mind the sucker punch wall can be a little protective of Jessica. <laughs> Told ya. Now sexy Rexy gets ready to pounce on the world famous big balls. Well, at least that disturbing dancing has stopped. Oh, Lord, please, no. <laughs> Looks like all the grinding is starting to take its toll. He seems plum tuckered out. Hey, hang in there, Rexy. Now he creeps his way forward. Oh, look at that. Rex falls hard, this time literally. Well, all's fair in love and wipeouts. Love hurts. It sure does, Rexy. It sure does. Finally, Rex will have to grab the rope, swing across the water, and onto the finishing platform. Sound easy? Nuh-uh. We've piled a bunch of blocks on there to make landing way tougher. Sexy Rexy takes off, soaring through the air like a Canada goose. Not hurts. But then dives like a loon. And Edmonton's Sexy Rexy finishes with a time of 6 minutes and 13 seconds. That also hurts. I'll say. Okay, that freak show's over. Let's take a moment and try to wash the image of Rex's dancing out of our minds with a more sane contestant, tattoo shop manager Joanna Rodriguez. <laughs> What's even happening right now? Is it a full moon? Ah. <laughs> J-Rod's getting ready to make her mark on the slippery stairs, but gets tattooed. Now, the slippery stairs, being so slippery, have been a nuisance to many of our contestants. Even ballerina Nadia Vandal from Toronto had trouble twinkling her toes up the steps. Graceful, but she still splashes down into Swan Lake. Paramedic Josh Jones from Cambridge, Ontario. Hey, no. Not a great response time for a paramedic. But there are some people who did conquer the stairs using a variety of tactics. Some by simply going slow and easy, and others by using speed and momentum. Like personal assistant Natalie Harrison, who ran up the stairs like she was running errands. Crank it hard, baby! 
from Natalie to horse enthusiast Robert Forsyth from Mississauga, Ontario, who calls himself Pony Boy despite not owning a horse. Yeah, this isn't gonna make things any weirder. <laughs> Okay, no more horsing around. It's time to pony up to the big balls. Oh, Pony Boy gets bucked right off. Not very stable up there. The balls, the balls. Oh, I thought it was gonna be so much easier than that. Oh, it's not easy at all. The big balls really taught me a lesson. Somehow I doubt that's a first. Um, I was the first uh, Canadian woman to throw in competition in the Highland Games heavy events. Can you throw one of these? I can try. Go <laughs> for it. Look at her lift. <laughs> okay, so she can throw big balls, but how well will she bounce on them? Oh! Honey glaze ham! That is one of the best things I've ever seen! That makes two of us. In slow motion, look as she gets tossed around the balls like a caber. Caber? Those little green things I flick off my smoked salmon? I'll explain later. All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the chorus, things go back to unnormal with Suraj Kumar from Edmonton. Suraj is a call center employee. Really? Who happens... Enough said. Let's head right to the sucker punch. That's for always calling during dinner. And that's for ignoring the no-call list. You're welcome, Canada. Hey, just for good measure, let's watch Saridge struggle his way up to the block swing. You know, Ennis, I don't think I've actually ever seen anyone wipe out there before. That's not technically even a part of the obstacle. Huh. Now facing the sucker punch wall is Rankin Inlet native Kelly McClarty. She knows the goal here isn't to get punched by every single glove, right? Hard to tell. But she taps the white glove, allowing her to move safely to the next obstacle. But the sucker punch ball will have noon of it. And she's not the only lady to take one on the chin today. Let's see if hair-obsessed Tana Marchand of Medicine Hat, Alberta, can fare any better. Hey, Wipo, you're not messing with this hair. Woo! Look at her bob and weave across the sucker punch wall. She whips her hair back and forth. Oh, oh she could use a real-life Medicine Hat after that shot. Great highlights. More like she got her hair didn't. On the block swing. Watch that hair, Tana. Ow! Oh, no. Oh, she should have watched her head and shoulders. Smash, rinse, and repeat. Who's at the top of the course now? Ah! 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 Uh, are those Daisy Dukes? Yes, and I think he wears them on purpose. Well, that's going to ruin that look for all of our viewers forever. And it's restored. Now let's see how Ben Daisy Duke's neck doll handles the hazards of the qualifier. He's up and over the slippery stairs with no problem, quickly onto the sucker punch wall. Whoa! Whoa. Let's slow that down and take a closer look. Ouch! Looks like his good old boys won't be needing more harm. I eat balls for breakfast! Well, looks like our Ben has got himself into a real pickle here. Let's see if he manages to get out of this one right after these messages. Okay, let's find out right now. Well, despite General Lee being slow, Ben Daisy Duke's neck toe finishes in just over two minutes. A goo goo goo. And so half of our contestants have run and half remain. Math, fun. Join us after the break to find out who advances to the next round and for more world-class wipeouts here on Wipeout Canada. Welcome back to Wipeout Canada, where we've been busy putting our contestants through the qualifier in order to narrow the field of 20 down to just 12. Those 12 will then move on to the next round and more importantly, one step closer the grand prize of $50,000. I mean, we could talk all day. Oh, let's. Can we? Can no, we? No, Ennis, we've got to get right back to the action. Oh, darn. Next time, buddy. Jessica's standing course side with our next contestant. Hey, guys, I'm standing here with Max Latte. My calculations are predicting a win for me. Now, do you have any strategies for the course? Uh, actually, uh, I have mapped out the course here. So I use projectile motion. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Projectile motion? Yeah, that does seem a little highfalutin for our show, doesn't it?
You know what else is highfalutin? The term highfalutin. <laughs> Here, is this better? Way better. Wait, what's that? What's what? There in the background. I didn't see anything. Moving along, let's see if physics teacher Max Latte is able to prove his theories on the course. Approaching the slippery stairs. And Professor Latte proves that a body in motion is funniest when it's falling down the stairs. Is that the slide rule? No. Now on to the sucker punch. Let's hope Max is wearing a pocket protector or a face protector. The sucker punch wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would it? But he took them off. Luckily, our physics teacher manages to hit the white glove to move safely on. Now let's review Max's plan for the big balls. The X component, you're going at a constant velocity, so you use your V equals uh, distance over time formula. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Right, yeah, so if you course. multiply by yeah, it's, right. It's all, it's simple science. Yeah, That's when you all lay I it do. out like that. Yeah, right. I think the big balls rejected his theory there, but here's one that works. Momentum plus big balls plus severe lack of coordination equals y -pen. That checks out. Professor Latte will now demonstrate swing theory. Oh, dear! But it just does not add up. Turns out math is hard. I bet he's pretty steamed after that one. And Max Woo! finishes with a time of 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Woo! We'll have to see if that's good enough to advance to the sweeper round. But in the meantime, thanks a latte. OK, who's next? This is Sandra Stevenson from Cambridge, Ontario. She's a grandmother of four and, oh, a nude volleyball player. Beg your pardon? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that's, whoa, 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 that's not done. No, that's bad. That's just not done. Yeah, you actually play volleyball on a team and you're naked. We're all naked. We're all ages. We get sand everywhere. That's two old people that have creeped me out in one show. You know, I'd rather not see her run. Can we just skip to the sucker punch, please? Good call. Now she's taking a few shots to the ribs. A few. Oh, nice punch. That might have knocked some teeth out. Assuming she put them in before the race. If she takes too many more shots, he's going to be punch drunk. Just like my Nana, Christmas time. Now naked Nana is at the big balls. Here she goes. Yikes, set and spike. That ought to wash all the sand out. Well, what volleyball player isn't used to a few bumps? Well, at least you can stay in the water as long as she wants without getting any more wrinkly. Thank you, white boy! Don't thank us yet, Nana. At the block swing, Across she goes, and oof, she just might. No. Oh, oh, no. Oh. Nana hits the water with a rope wrapped around her legs. She's really hanging on. That's what her kids have been saying for years. Dennis, you did not. I did. So Cambridge, Ontario's Naked Nana finishes with a time of 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Number one. Way to go, Nana. This one's for you, Mommy. Next up is Toronto, Ontario's proud mama's boy, Andrew Blair. I don't even know what this is, but it's delicious. Yeah, this banana is going to help me get through the course. Thanks, Mom. There it is again. What the heck is that? I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Right behind Andrew. All right, man, calm down, dude. Let's see how Mama's boy does on the course. Well, he toddles towards the first obstacle. Hey, who took down the safety gate? Oh. <laughs> Didn't your mama tell you not to play on the stairs? Oh. But Andrew Blair just didn't miss it. Here comes LaDuke, Alberta's Amber Pauls. Ooh, and she makes it over. Amber is a flight attendant, so she had no trouble exiting the slippery stairs by the inflatable emergency slide. Emergency exits from the big balls are located here, 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 and here. In the sudden event of a drop in altitude, prepare for a violent water landing. We know you have many choices and obstacles, and we'd like to thank you for flying your big balls. With a time of 3 minutes and 9 seconds, fly girl Amber looks like she'll fly straight through to the next round. What the clam? He's back. Who? And for the, the look. There. Oh, yeah. Weird. Jessica, who is this masked man? So you're a photobomber. Explain to our viewers what a photobomber is. A photobomber is a skilled technician that can uh, make a, a photo move from a happy memory to an exciting one. So you're basically saying that you ruin people's precious memories. He's at the top of the course. Oh, he's taking his mask off. Look at that. You're welcome, Canada. 
And the photo bomber is off in a flash. Let's hope he's done in under an hour. Oh, he can fly, too. You know, I doubt they'd let a photo bomber on a plane. We'll have to ask Amber Pauls. Let's see how things develop on the big balls. Will he make it? Whoa. <laughs> oh, dear. That's a negative. Who's next, I wonder? It's me, Miss Blueberry Sweetheart. All right, we'll pick up Nadine Matthews on the big balls. Yikes, sweet wipeout. Those balls dished her up and served her a la mode. She hit hard. Let's hope she isn't leaking any juicy filling. Of course, Nadine wasn't the only one to get chewed up by the big balls. Oh, oh out. Okay, now let's meet wrestler Steve Snyders. Suplex Steve is set to grapple the big balls. Wrestlers rule! Wrestlers rule? Not on the big balls, they don't. Who's at the top of the course now? Just beat it! So I'm guessing you're a fan of MJ. Ever since I was a kid, MJ's the king of pop. Now to became a surgeon, I'm the king of snot. The king of snot? Ear, nose, and throat surgery, yeah. Well, let's see if Dr. MJ's ears, nose, and throat can make it through the sucker punch without needing plastic surgery. Whoa! Oh, no. Looks like the wall saw his face and decided to beat it. After a shot like that, Tahid may not recognize the man in the mirror. Shamon! Okay, one more contestant to go. Who's gonna bring it on home? Uh, no, you're not. Okay, now you are. Jackie is actually an aspiring stun woman. Wait, did she just say whiteout? I guess that's why they don't give stun people lines. Stick to what you know, Jackie. It's basic show business. Jumping Jackie jumps and jumping Jackie falls. That is totally my favorite nursery rhyme. The block swing should be different for Jackie. She is an athlete with great upper body strength. Also, we're going to add a little motivation. Oh, she totally missed the platform. No, she actually nailed the platform. The stunt lady could have used her own stunt lady. Well, that stunt she pulled didn't stop jumping Jackie from qualifying for the next round. Among those joining her in the top 12, Photo Bomber Nathan, Highland Game Starlet Jackie, Wrestler Suplex Steve, Blueberry Sweetheart Nadine, and Mama's Boy Andrew. But before we go to break, let's take another look at a contestant that wasn't so fortunate to make it through with our car star make it unhappen move of the round. I love this part. For this, let's go back to call center employee Saridge Kumar. Saridge was dealt some bad advice on how to approach the block swing, somehow getting himself disconnected before transferring to the actual start of the obstacle. Bad call, Saridge. Stay tuned for more Wipeout Canada after the break. Welcome back to Wipeout Canada, where we've been witness to some stunning wipeouts thus far. Some real doozies here, but spirits remain high. Which, if you think about it, is pretty impressive, considering these folks have been thrown downstairs, punched in the face, and bounced around giant red balls. But it was all worth it for the 12 that made it through relatively unscathed. Relatively. Among the qualifiers, we have Dr. MJ Tahid, Don't Mess With Madhu, Marchand, Fly Girl Amber, and Pony Boy Robert. But before one Canadian penny of that $50,000 jingles in their pocket, They'll have to get through this, the Motrin sweeper round. Here, the 12 contestants must stand on their pedestals while trying to avoid the sweeper arm. And to make things more difficult, we've added the crusher, which will close, making the space they have to jump through smaller and smaller as the sweeper arm goes around. That's going to make things a lot more difficult, Jonathan. That's why I said it like that. Yeah, yep. The final seven contestants standing will advance, and the very last person to go down will get a ticket straight through to the wipeout zone. A huge advantage. So, think they're ready? <laughs> Well, the nays have it. Too bad. Let's do this thing! The sweeper arm slowly gets up to speed. I like to call this section the false sense of security builder. Even at this speed, some of our contestants don't seem too secure. And I call this the celebrate way too early section. 
The sweeper has a mind of its own, and it does not like being mocked. Remember, the first five people to go down are eliminated from the competition entirely, so I'd suck up to the sweeper arm if I were them. Or it will exact its sweepery justice. Oh, oh no! Flight attendant Amber Pauls is the first to go down. Hey, Amber, don't forget to securely unbuckle your knees. She did not quite reach cruising altitude before she ran into some turbulence and had to make an unscheduled landing. In the meantime, let's try to make up some time in the air by kicking up the juice. Oh, great. I love juice. Is it apple? No. The... Oh, right. With the arm moving faster and the space to jump through getting smaller, it's going to start raining cats and bodies out there. Dogs and... Right. Dogs and bodies. Ah! Ooh, and don't mess with my dude, Tana. Misses her platform by a hair. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Hair, hair, little fella. Here she even tries to protect her nose hair. Well, it's pretty uncomfortable to blow dry up there. Mm-hmm. We're down to 10 contestants trying desperately not to be eliminated and look like idiots. Let's be a little positive here. I think of these next three to go down as our bestest losers. Glass half full. I like it. You got it. And our blueberry sweetheart, Nadine Matthews, Newfoundland landed in the water, earning her third place in the loser category. She's going to be feeling pie-faced after that half-baked effort. Time to speed things up again and tighten up that crusher. Now we'll learn who can adapt and who will go splat. A few different jumping strategies on display here, Ennis. Mama's boy, Andrew, with your basic high knee. Jumpin' Jackie with the fancier split foot jump, and Ben Daisy Duke's nectar with the rock out. Oh, oh no! Dear. Jackie the Jackhammer Greg slips on the podium and hits the water hard. Like a jackhammer, I guess. Quick, somebody toss her a life caber. Oh, the cabers again. It's a wonderful <laughs> thing. After the next wipeout, everyone left moves on. Oh, oh personal no. assistant Natalie is the last to be eliminated. That sweeper means business. Natalie certainly took the message as her yeah. dreams of $50,000 were put on hold indefinitely. And that fall sounded the horn, signifying that the remaining seven will all move on to the dizzy dummy round. Ah, yes, Dennis, but now they're playing for that vine of the wipeout zone. The last one standing skips the dizzy dummy and gets to rest until the final. Informative. I thought so. And there's a close call for jumping Jackie McQuaig. She almost tumbled into the drink there. You know, this is getting fun. Let's raise the bar some more, huh? Can we? Can we? All right, little fella. Oh, my, a double takedown. Jumping Jackie and Ben Nectal's runs like Ben's Daisy Dukes are cut way too short. Oh, Ben really goes down hard. And with those tight shorts, I can see he doesn't have a life vest in his pocket. Or is he just not happy to see us? Yeah. Let's review who's up in the running and who's down in the swimming. Right here we have Suplex Steve, Dr. MJ Caduce, Photo Bomber Nathan, Pony Boy Robert, and finally, saving the drama for his mama, Mama's Boy Andrew. No sooner than we said it, Andrew gets all wet. Mrs. Blair, he may need a change when he gets home. Of his diaper. Here we go. Four left. Photo Bomber Nathan is into it. Higher, higher, higher. All right, let's. Ooh, ooh. Suplex Steve gets tagged out. Nice. He was clotheslined by the sweeper arm and pile drived into that pedestal. Is it pile drived or drove, driven? Just let it go, too. Right. One last raise of the bar. Boy, this is exciting. The final. Oh, oh, oh no! Pony Boy goes down, proving that not only can you lead a horse to water, you can also make him sink. Sorry, bro. Hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the final. This is a showdown, a throwdown, if you will. Now they both got game, and they're using that game to be good at this game. Photobomber Nathan is trying to put a bug in Tahid's ear, but that won't do much. He's an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Two left. Who will go through to the wipeout zone? We just said that, Jessica. Jeez, can she even hear us? Both these guys desperate for that free pass to the finals. What? No, you guys like it then? The photo bomber is just chirping at Dr. MJ. Smile for the birdie. Oh, maybe instead of running his mouth, he should have been focused on jumping his feet as Nathan is down. That means Dr. MJ Caduce gets a dirty by Anna into the wipeout zone. Hee <laughs> hee! The diminutive doctor showed some incredible jumping ability. Amazing altitude here, making it look as easy as ABC, or one, two, three, even.
Dr. MJ hops two steps closer to the big prize of $50,000 and the title of Wipeout Champion. You know, I love giving out titles, Sir Jonathan. Speaking of titles, Professor and Mrs. Ennis, hey. if Wipeout Canada had a Miss Congeniality category, no doubt Nadine Matthews would take home that prize. It's me, Miss Blueberry Sweetheart. But we don't. So she'll have to accept the consolation prize of Motrin's wickedest wipeout, Kablamo! You know, I'll wager she would have preferred a pie in the face. A hard-earned honor that wound up shortening her run. Shortening is used in pie crust. Congratulations, Nadine. After the break, we'll get to see these six competitors take on the queasy fun of the Dizzy Dummy round right here on Wipeout Canada. Round and round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. It's Dizzy Dummy time. Welcome back to Wipeout Canada. It's been a thrilling match thus far. Out of 20 brave, toque-wearing Canadians, we're now down to only seven, mm. one of whom will walk away with $50,000. Dr. MJ Tahit Kadusi was victorious in the sweeper round, earning him a ticket straight through to the Wipeout Zone. Meanwhile, these six will try not to lose their lunch on the Dizzy Dummy. They are Mama's Boy Andrew, Suplex Steve, Daisy Duke Ben, Photo Bomber Nathan, Pony Boy Robert, and last, but by no means least, Jumpin' Jackie. The Dizzy Dummy is made up of three separate rounds. Each starts with a spin on the Dizzy Dummy itself, followed by a race across an obstacle. First the log roll, then the barrel crossing, and then the log roll one more time. The first person across in each round advances. Can we please just get this done? Um, be careful what you wish for. And away we go. You know, it's always fun to listen in to a first ride on the Dizzy Dummy. Let's. Holy Oh my god. Holy This always seems like the hardest part for our contestants. I wonder why. Mm. Well, Ennis, the fluid in their semicircular canals moves in the same direction they're traveling, which stimulates hair like sensory nerve cells within the canals. They stop, but the fluid doesn't, so the hair cells keep telling their brain that they're spinning even after they've stopped. The problem is compounded by the fact that we spin them in both directions for a long period of time. Wow. I thought you were just going to say something about having to run with pukey guts. Oh, yeah, well, that too. Meanwhile, on the course, the spinning is over, and they're off. Well, some of them are. Photobomber Nathan seems a little worse for wear. But Daisy Dukes Ben is making a break for it. He's having a great run. Oh, he was very close, just didn't have enough speed to make it over that log. I believe you've discovered the first problem ever with Daisy Duke shorts. Other than the fact that Ben is wearing them. Mama's boy Andrew sneaks out, but gets sent to his room immediately. And Suplex Steve goes down. The log landing a drop kick to his solar plexus. He'll head back to repair for a rematch. A nice little bit of sportsmanship there between Nathan and Jackie. And Nathan goes out in front. Oh, he could get there. And he does. Photo bomber Nathan Collins sticks the landing. What a fantastic run. Look at his heroic victory pose. Nathan Collins now joins Dr. MJ Caduce in the wipeout zone and keeps alive his chance to win $50,000. Jessica is checking in with a green around the gills Nathan at the finish line. I'm going to go get some water. No, you're not allowed to. You got to stay here. <laughs> you're laughing at Don't steamroll me. Don't steamroll me. Canada sweetheart, huh? Oh, now that's what I call an interview. Yep, totally. Hey, someone kick him. We're on a deadline. For round two of the Dizzy Dummy, our five remaining contestants are getting spun once more and will then try to navigate the barrel crossing. Let's do this! Only two spots left up for grabs in the wipeout zone. Feels good. I love it. The Dizzy Dummy stops and they wobble their way towards the barrels with Daisy Duke's Ben leading the way. And here's an interesting strategy. Looks like the rest of the contestants are waiting to see how he tackles this obstacle before trying it themselves. Okay, this plan has two flaws. One, you're giving Ben a head start. Two, you gotta look at his butt in those cutoffs. Well, that was kind of cool. Why about Canada's version of synchronized diving? That was cool. Ben is still in the lead and looking strong. Oh, a little stumble. Oh, he overcommitted to that barrel like he did to his costume and fell over the far side. Here comes Jumpin' Jackie. And Mama's boy Andrew falls down, goes boom next to her. Everyone has taken the long swim back to the starting platform, which must be exhausting. I'll never know because I am not getting in that wall. It's like Lake Ontario in there. I'll say. 
Now, Suplex Steve takes his turn. This cagey wrestler stood back and watched the others and is now trying to use what he learned. Pretty smart strategy for a guy who just rolls around in a unitard all day. Meanwhile, only Ben has been able to start the course again. But it'll take a miracle to catch Steve. And Suplex Steve moves on to the wipeout zone. Well, he survived this series and rumbled through royally. Wipeout zone! Jessica? Last chance to see who will join these three in the wipeout zone. The last spot in the finals is up for grabs. One last chance to make it through. Let's see how they do. Pony boy Rob gallops out of the gate pretty fast. Will he make it? <laughs> oh, well, they will have to swim to the start and get back in the saddle. Here comes jumping Jackie McQuaig, showing good speed. She, oh my, she's done it. Jumping Jackie has advanced to the wipeout zone. Living up to her name there, she's the fourth and final contestant through. You're going to the wipeout zone. Really, really happy. So happy. That's all. Yeah, I wonder if she's happy. Congratulations, Jackie. Quite a stunt you pulled grabbing that last spot. So, joining sweeper champion MJ Caduce in the wipeout zone are Jumping Jackie, Suplex Steve, and Photobomber Nathan. Don't go anywhere. Up next is the wipeout zone, where one of our top four will win $50,000 right here on Wipeout Canada. Welcome back to Wipeout Canada, where a field of 20 of the weirdest people we can find has been now narrowed down to just four weirdos. And those four weirdos are Jumping Jackie McQuaig, Suplex Steve Snyders, Photobomber Nathan Collins, and Dr. MJ Tahid Kadusi. But remember, only one will walk away with that $50,000 grand prize. And before we determine a winner, all four remaining contestants must face the fire and water of the wipeout zone. First contestants will have to slide down the killer surf, dodge barrels on their way up the barrel run, inch their way across the water wall, then go for a whirl on the sponge towel spinner, run across the roller, and pass the launch pads to the finish platform in order to stop the clock. These four finalists are ready to battle it out. First to sink her teeth into the wipeout zone will be the aspiring stunt woman, jumping Jackie McQuaig. Let's take a look at Jackie's journey. Jumpin' Jackie was doing backflips, making it through the qualifier without breaking any bones. After testing her high falls training in the sweeper, she kicked her legs and some butt on the dizzy dummy to qualify for the wipeout zone. Will she pull off the best stunt of them all and win the 50 Gs? Time to find out. Remember, kids, don't try this at home. This is a trained professional. Well, an in-training aspiring professional. Close enough. Oh, and she launches herself off that ramp with reckless abandon, mm, tossing her body around like one of those dummies they use in the movies. You mean stunt people? I do. Now on the barrel run, bit of a cautious start, but catches her stride and makes it to the water wall. Oh, no. Some hesitation here. Looks like she may be a little confused on where to start. My first instinct would be to step on the ledge part that's built for people to walk on. She's still being fairly cautious, not that that's necessarily a bad strategy. A fall here would put a serious dent in her time. Right, not to mention her ego and possibly her face. She's out of the water, but not out of the woods. Holy That about sums it up. Next up is the sponge towel spinner. Nice jump. She's on. Now for the tricky part, standing up, getting her bearings, and moving on. Sounds like me after a good house party. Oh, I don't know what to do. What to do. Looking a little disoriented here. Sounds like me after a good house party. But she manages to get to her feet, and she sticks the landing. She's back up, and it's time to see if she can avoid being the fall girl on the roller. Oh, oh no. no! Her ninja-like approach didn't last long as the roller turned jumping Jackie into a stunt diver. But she's back up for another attempt. This time, the roller stopped spinning. So it's pretty much the easiest thing on planet Earth? That's not what I was going for, no. Oh, I should stop interjecting that, is what you're saying. Yes. And she does her best impression of a tightrope walker and makes it safely across. On to the launch pads now. Jumpa Jackie should be good at this. She takes a moment to catch her breath and psych herself up. She drops down to the first trampoline and, oh, she gets launched straight into the second platform and goes down. Breakaway glass, that looked like it hurt. 
Now back up for a second attempt. She leaps down, this time choosing to balance herself on that first trampoline. I think her face prefers that strategy. And she's up, up, and away from the first trampoline and back down into the water. Looks like some indecision on her part there caused the slip up. Yeah, indecision and two left feet. And after swimming all the way back, she's up again for a third attempt. What will she do this time? She looks confused. She shakes her head and just goes for it, and whoa! She catapults herself right over that second trampoline. And she pulls off an impressive somersault at the end of it. I think she may have a promising future in the stunt world. Up for her fourth attempt now. She leaps down to the first, and this time manages to hang on to that second trampoline. She gets up, still focused, and needs to make one final jump, which she does. Finally stopping the clock with a time of five minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> Trampolines, very difficult. Apparently so. Up next is the self-proclaimed king of snot, full-time surgeon and part-time Michael Jackson fanatic, Tahid, Dr. MJ Kadusi. What was his story? Our ears, nose, and throat doctor took it on the chin during the qualifier before appearing invincible on the sweeper, allowing him to moonwalk his way straight into the wipeout zone. And he is off down the killer surf. Oh, he hits hard. Annie, are you OK? Unlike Jackie, he manages to stay on the sled, but makes a rough landing into the water. I hope he's got his back surgeon buddies on speed dial. Who doesn't? Dr. MJ has recovered and is up to the barrel run. Here we go. Up and over easily. Up and over again, slicing through with surgical precision. Now onto the water wall. Footing is everything here, but looks like he's a little confused about what to do with his hands. Not exactly what you want to see from a surgeon, but he has picked up the pace. Our favorite MJ fan shuffles his way safely to the next platform without going off the wall. Nice reference. Mm. Now let's see if Dr. MJ has the nose for the sponge towel spinner. Nice reference. Quickly on and stays on his feet, having no trouble at all. He leaps off and, oh no, and it slides right down the platform and into the drink. The way he's doing, he probably wants us to leave him alone. And Tahiti is looking a little sluggish, not so light on his feet anymore. Looking a little defeated to boot, but he makes the jump and hangs on. Lines up the other platform, and he sticks it. He still has a chance here, Jonathan. Let's see if he can finish it off. Now at the roller. And Tahid goes down again. Oh, showing off a little footwork on the way down, but unfortunately, it was in the wrong direction. Wait a second, it looks like... Ennis, is he quitting? No, he can't be. He's still got plenty of time to catch up. But he is! He's calling it, Jonathan. Not exactly a thriller of an ending. Well, you are currently in first place. Up against a time of five minutes, eight seconds, Dr. MJ showed that it must be human nature to want to be ending something. But when we come back, we'll see if one of our two final contestants can do any better. They've got about 50,000 reasons to give it their best shot. Plus, they can win $50,000. That's what I was going for. Sometimes I just stop listening. We'll be right back with the exciting conclusion of the Wipeout Zone here on Wipeout Canada. Here on Wipeout Canada. Here on Wipeout Canada. Welcome back to Wipeout Canada. Before the break, we witnessed a stunning turn of events as early favorite Dr. MJ Tahid Kadusi simply gave up near the end of his run. And that allowed jumping Jackie McQuaig to remain in the lead with a time of five minutes and eight seconds. We've got two competitors to go. Let's get the second half started with photo bomber Nathan Collins. Let's take a look at his journey into the Wipeout Zone. You're welcome, Canada. The mystery man made an instant impression on us. With cameras flashing, he forged his own path across the qualifier, staying focused just long enough to survive the sweeper before sneaking his way into the wipeout zone like it was someone else's photo op. Here we go, folks. This is what I'm thinking about, peeing. What is it about the wipeout zone that makes everyone want to pee? Well, it could be the fear or the constant running water. Oh, I'll be right back. And Nathan goes ripping down the killer surf in a flash. That's a little spread eagle there. Look at that. This guy definitely knows how to play it up for the camera. And now up and onto the barrel run. He sprints up the ramp, hurtling the barrels with ease. 
And now he climbs up to a place that's not really an official part of the course. I don't think you get to do that, Nathan. Oh, you can, Jackie. There's no penalty. You just look like a total nincompoop. He manages to find his way back on course as my co-host finds his way back from the bathroom. What I miss? Nathan's making his way slowly across the water wall, being extra careful to maintain his grip. He's really keeping a low center of gravity in that crunch position. Oh, could have done without the close-up, though. Seriously. Still carefully edging his way across the narrow ledge, he's kept himself out of danger this far, but is he going too slow? Well, you know what they say, Jonathan, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, but that's for races where you don't have to be fast, which is almost every race. Don't be a racist. And he's safely aboard the sponge towel spinner. The photo bombers on a roll, or at least behind one, clinging for his dear life. <laughs> Even being spun at full speed, this guy knows how to find the camera. Now at the roller, taking a moment to settle himself. And he makes his move, quickly goes down. His flawless run is over, but there's still time to spare. So hopefully he decides not to quit like that last cat. Now on his second attempt, Nathan moves across in his typical stealth-like fashion and makes it. And he has three minutes to conquer the launch pads and take the lead with only one contestant remaining. He makes the leap, grabs hold of the second trampoline and pulls himself to his feet. And he takes the final step to stop the clock at two minutes, four seconds, easily besting Jumpin' Jackie's time. I just went to see my onesie. Oh, man. All right, well, that's too much information for me. You? Yeah. So here's where we stand. The photo bomber has emerged from the shadows to claim the lead and make himself the front runner for that $50,000. With only one contestant to go, it's this guy. Suplex Steve Snyders. Steve's journey began with a little foreshadowing of what was to come. Although he was tripped up in the qualifier and out-wrestled by the sweeper arm, he grappled his way across the dizzy dummy and onto the wipeout zone. Are you ready for the wipeout zone? I think so, yeah. I'm just gonna go through and, and see how things go, you know, just take it uh, one step at a time and, and see how things go. You know, he might want to work on his wrestling character. Really, I love Mr. Passive. The time to beat is two minutes, four seconds. Let's see if he can keep this run as tight as his unitard. He's off down the killer surf and gets body slammed into the water. You look like he emptied that pool. Man, that man is too big for this course. Now let's see if he can avoid a leg lock on the barrel run. That would be the worst. Buddy, pile drives through. He did the same thing. What a loser. Not necessary, Nathan. Steve corrects his mistake and gets ready to mount the water wall. He's doing well here so far, Ennis, which is not surprising. This guy is an absolute specimen. And he's made it across the water wall less than a minute in. Now it's on to the sponge towel spinner, keeping his eyes on the target, and he pounces down Jimmy Superfly snooker style. My lord, we're old. He's back on his feet, and in the blink of an eye, he's down to the mat, right back up, and hovering over the roller like he's on the top turnbuckle. The wrestler makes his move and darts across the roller on the first try. Ooh, yeah! And he's already onto the second trampoline with over half a minute to spare. Can he pull off his finishing move and take home the 50,000? Suplex Steve Snyders, you are our Wipeout Champion! Woo! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Woo! Come on, I need a bit of a dance from you now. $50,000? That's a pretty good dance. All right. Congratulations, Steve. Even though deep down inside, I was really cheering for the other guy. We're supposed to be unbiased, but so was I. Well, that's it for this episode of Wipeout Canada. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Even more, since if you don't keep tuning in, we'll get canceled. Oh. I'm Jonathan Torrance. And I'm Anna Sesmer. For Jessica Phillips and the entire team, we'll see you next time on Wipeout Canada.